Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Kayla Santos claims her mother promised her a sizable graduation gift, but then used the money to pay for damage caused by her troublesome sister. All right. Marion Santos says the cash was a present and not an obligation. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Sean. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Santos versus Santos. Ms. Santos, you are suing your mother, Ms. Santos, for $3,000 for damage to a car and breach of contract. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Santos' mom, you say that the car has been repaired. Yes. Tell the court what happened. Mm -hmm. So, Your Honor, my troublesome little sister just moved back in. You know, she's in and out of the house because she had a teen pregnancy, so she was getting into it with her father's baby, you know, back and forth. And she needed a car. She took my car without my permission. I had no idea she had my car until I saw it was wrecked. So I told my parents. My parents said, you know what, we're going to deal with it. I wanted to call the police, and I wanted to file a claim with the insurance, you know, to get my car fixed. So wait, you both live with your parents? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and it's your car? Yes. Whose name is it in? My name. You bought it. All right, and so, Ms. Santos, how did you find out that the car was gone? Because after she wrecked it, she called me. She called me directly, and uh, she wanted me to send AAA to come get the car. Because she had wrecked the car and was somewhere on the side of the road? Yes. And so, Ms. Santos, when did you find out that your sister had taken your car? When I had to leave for work. I went outside and my car was gone. All right, and so when this all gets sorted out, you say in your testimony that you're suing for auto damage and breach of contract for the car repair. How does that happen? So basically, my parents promised me $5,000 as a graduation gift. You know, after my sister did wreck my car, they took $500 from the $5,000 to supposedly get it fixed. Therefore, they only gave me $4,500. But your honor, the car, according to my mother, was fixed. They took it, it to some fixed. random mechanic. And I have evidence here of how the car looked after she got it fixed and how it looked after I took it to the actual dealership Let me see to get it fixed. This evidence. So, Your Honor, in the photo, you'll see that the door handles are white. They do not match. There's discoloration on the door, and they put put caps on the rims. My roof was also kind of leaking, so if I left it like that on a rainy day, my car would have been flooded. So I had to take it to the dealership. You know, the check engine light was on. It was just not safe to drive, Your Honor. I was so scared to get in that car and put my life at risk because it was not fixed properly. So does AAA tow the car to a body shop? Yes. Where's the estimate for that body shop? Um, so I, I have that here. Let me see it, please. Um, and it was, it's a friend of my husband, so we got it, we, that, that's why we only paid $500, because no one is gonna charge you that, but this is a friend Did of Did you ours. report this to the insurance? No. All right, so you decided not to report it to the insurance and just get the car fixed for $500? Yes. Was it determined whether or not this was your younger daughter's fault or was it somebody else's fault? Well, I mean, she didn't get into an accident with another vehicle, thank God. She, she hit, like, she hit, like, a little embankment, a little wall. Oh, on so, the highway. Yeah, on the side of, on the passenger side. All right, so and she so didn't... you decided to get that done, $500, from a mechanic you knew. Yes. But you say that was not up to your standards, Ms. Santos. Yes, ma'am, it was not and safe to drive. And you went and had an additional estimate done, because I don't even see, oh, here's the estimate. Uh, you know what I just like to Door say? replacement, $150, and roof alignment, $200, $350, and then the mirror for $150 would be $500 you pay him. Now, what kind of car is this? That's real cheap. 
Yes. Uh, like I said, only because it's a friend of my husband's. My husband's a contractor, so these are friends that are people right, he's worked for. All right, but Ms. Santos, you're saying your mom and dad took this to a family friend, but you didn't believe the car was still safe. Yes. So then you took it to another body shop. Yes, I took it to the actual dealership, and I had to pay $2,500. Yeah. To get it repaired. Yes. And here's the estimate here that says, so $1,100 plus a service fee of $600, mm -hmm. And then the engine washing. Why did the engine need to be washed if this was body damage? Coming up. We originally told her we we're going to give her 5,000. We took 500 out to get the car fixed. But why'd you take 500 to get the car <clears throat> fixed when it wasn't her fault that the car got messed up? And later. And so I tugged on his shirt and I made him look at me and I told him, hey, it's too loud, man. Can you please turn it down? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. He never said such thing. So you don't I even remember any of this happening? No. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Kayla Santos, who is fighting with her mother, Marion Santos, over a graduation gift. To be honest, Your Honor, I don't know much about cars. It wasn't like that of before. Um, the engine light just stayed on. So like I said, I don't really know anything about cars. I so just... the engine light wouldn't go off? No. A after she had the accident? It the was engine on light was on before the accident. And you said what? The engine light was on. Oh, the engine light was on before she even took it? Yes. It would come on and off, but it stayed on after my sister took it. All right. So once you decided to get this car fixed, Ms. Santos, and then your daughter felt like, Mom, this isn't fixed right, then what? why didn't you say, well, I want to make sure it's safe for you? Why did you think $500 in repair after a wreck was sufficient? Uh, because it, um, it was fixed correctly. We trust this mechanic. He's been our family mechanic for years. She's just been extra picky. She's, you know, right now she's really hurt with her sister being back, and she feels like we're giving her special attention. But, I mean, we gave her $4,500 as a gift for graduation, and that's not an obligation. It was a gift. We originally told her we are going to give her 5000 We took 500 out to get the car fixed. But why did you take 500 to get the car <clears throat> fixed when it wasn't her fault that the car got I, messed no, up? No, we, we understand that, Your Honor. It's just that we didn't have all the money to cover it. She just graduated. We gave her a graduation party as well. And, um, you know, we've had an extra finance burden with my younger daughter being home, and we have a grandbaby at home. And and so now your younger daughter, after taking the car without permission, running into an embankment, and everything else that's going on, she's basically relieved of any responsibility. Is she paying any of this money back? Uh, she's going to, we, we told her she's going to have to. I mean, she needs to get a job as well. Uh, so she has no job. She's taking other people's cars, wrecking them. You going and fixing it the cheapest way you can fix it. You took the $500 out that you promised for her graduation gift to cover that. Yes. Now, you promised her a gift of $5,000. That's correct. That's something you told her you were going to do for her. You promised her you were going to give her $5,000, but only gave her $4,500. Yes. And was there something you were going to use that $5,000 for, Ms. Santos, or you were just expecting a gift of $5,000. No, Your Honor, I did have a plan. You know, I just graduated high school about nine months ago. I'm really looking into my future. I was actually going to get an apartment with that money. You know, I'm trying to move out of my parents' house, especially now that my younger sister's Did you go in. sign a lease? Yes. That's why I really depended on those $5,000. So you, you, you went and signed a lease on an apartment, and what was the down payment? Um, $2,500. All right. So in some ways, you acted in reliance on the fact that your mom and dad said to you, you're getting $5,000. Well, yeah, they're my parents. So I then thought they I could rely on my parents. Hold on. It was going to be a Hold gift. On. Hold on. Legally, when you set up and you're going to give a gift, you know, until you give the gift, until you deliver that gift, right, the gift is unenforceable. You could just decide not to give the gift, right? However, when you tell someone you're going to do something, when there is some type of reliance, when someone says to you, I'm going to do this for you, and then in reliance on that fact, you go and do something else, then there does begin to be some protections under the law for people who relied on something other people said. It seems clear to me that your instinct was to give her the $5,000 because you subtracted $500 
from the five thousand dollars for something that was not her fault. No, and we understand. It was something that. you decided to to not report to the insurance. Now, legally, there may be, may be some wiggle room as to whether or not you truly owed her $5,000 when it was a gift. But in this courtroom, I'm able to decide what is exactly not just legally appropriate, but in this instant, morally. You cannot bring your younger daughter back into the home, wreaking havoc and causing problems, and allow your older daughter to suffer for that. That's just not right. When you've got that one problem, child, don't let every other sibling have to bear the burden of the problem child, right? That's your responsibility because that's your child. So it's the opinion of this court that you should not have subtracted the $500 from that gift. You also should have made sure the car was fixed appropriately in a way that you know your daughter could rely on and feel safe. I don't think you did that either. I think you did a patch job. So your damages are $1,778 that you paid to get that fixed because I am not including the engine washing because I do not think that that was an issue that happened necessarily because of the crash. It, ha it was already an issue before. But the $500 that you were missing, I'll add that. I'm going to award you, Ms. Santos, $1,778, which is the cost of your repairs minus the whole engine thing because it's very questionable if that light was on already, whether or not that was caused by your younger sister's crash. So the $1,700.78 plus the $500 that I think you should not have subtracted for those repairs, Mom, comes to $2,200.78. Judgment for the plaintiff. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $2,200.78. How the hell did you bring me to court? Because to she needs to, to take sue responsibility. Me and your dad in court. How many years? You've let her get I away know, with how many things? but you know that she has issues. She has problems. Please follow okay, me Okay, that's this exactly way. why. Oh my God, I can't believe you. Coming up. How long did you have them on? We had a break between the show, so I would say uh, two two-hour sessions about. Two hours with the headphones on straight? Uh, just about, yes, ma'am. You did a two-hour set, and you had a new person keep the headphones on for two hours? You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Julian Caron claims his hearing was permanently damaged when he assisted during a blaring DJ set. Isaac Dawson says the plaintiff never complained to him about the volume, so he's not responsible. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Karan versus Dawson. Mr. Karan, you are suing Mr. Dawson for $2,500 for sound therapy for hearing loss you say you encountered after the defendant's event. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And the defendant, Mr. Dawson, you say you aren't responsible for anything. That's correct. All right. Tell me what happened, Mr. Karan. Why are you suing today? Well, I worked for one night with uh, Mr. Dawson. He posted that he was looking for a DJ's assistant, and I reached out to him. I told him I didn't have any experience, but he said that that was fine, and he still wanted to meet up with me. Why did you get in, in, in the ring about this position? You just wanted to be a part of his DJ set? Yes, Your Honor. I'm musically inclined. I play in a rock band. I play the bass. And uh, just being a big fan of his... So the conversation was about what he needed you to do. Yes, Your Honor. What did that entail? I would be mixing the songs, making sure that one song to the next would transition smoothly. Now, are you doing the old school DJ and Mr. Dawson where it's two real albums going and you're doing that? Or you got to move one hand and move the other hand the other way? No, Your Honor. It's digital. Oh, see how old I am. <laughs> Tell him I ate. So we don't DJ like that anymore? He's like laughing like, no, Your Honor, that's not what I'm doing. And you believe the things that you set up for Mr. Quran were, those were tasks that an inexperienced person could handle? Absolutely. So, Mr. Quran, you get a chance of a lifetime. He gives you a task that it looks like you can perform. Everything's great. What happens? How do you end up in court? Coming up. When you turned the button, when you were there, they didn't go down. Yes, Your Honor. Or did you just have the wrong button because you didn't know what you were doing? You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Julian Caron, who blames Isaac Dawson for injuries from an ear-splitting DJ gig. 
Well, Your Honor, everything seemed really simple at the beginning. It wasn't until the event actually started, and he actually started performing to where the, the volume went up at least by two times. I tried to tell him, I reached over, I looked at him, and I said, Isaac, I need your help. I kept like trying to deal with it because it's my first job, I'm not trying to make a bad impression, but it, is, it started to cause pain. And so I tugged on his shirt and I made him look at me and I told him, hey, it's too loud, man, can you please turn it down? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. He never said such thing. So you don't I even remember any of this happening? No. All right, so Mr. Karan, do you have any evidence that shows the damage that was caused to your ears because of the headphones? Yes, ma'am, I do. I and so you say you tugged on Mr. Dawson's um, coat a couple times. Uh, yes, ma'am. And it was, the, the sound was so loud, but you kept the headphones on? Yes, Your Honor. How long did you have them on? We had a break between the show, so I would say uh, two two-hour sessions about. Two hours with the headphones on straight? Uh, just about, yes, ma'am. You did a two-hour set? And you had a new person keep the headphones on for two hours? Your Honor, this is normal practice in the industry. In other countries, they go all night. All right, so here's the invoice. You had to go to an ear health and sound therapy clinic, and you spent $2,500 doing sessions because what? After you came out of the job, what was the damage? What happened to your ear? So after the whole event that night, I felt cloudiness in my hearing, and I, I brought it to his attention, but he just told me that it was a part of the job and kind of brushed me away. I heard a ringing in my left ear. And after a couple of days, it kept getting worse and worse, and it was impeding me from talking to just people and from taking phone calls. So did you have control of the headphones, Mr. Dawson, or did Mr. Karan? Your Honor, no, I did not have control of the headphones. Do I you remember him showing you how to turn your headphones down? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And but I, when you turned the button, when you were there, they didn't go down? Yes, Your Honor. Or did you just have the wrong button because you didn't know what you were doing? Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. All right, uh, it's been determined by this court that both of you all had a part to play in this. Mr. Dawson, if you're gonna bring people in that have absolutely no experience DJing, you do owe them a duty of care to be able to say, these are safe levels for headphones. Don't go past this level. You could cause some type of damage to your ear. With that said, he's not even testifying that you in any way failed to help adjust the headphones negligently or purposefully because you were out working and doing your thing. Mr. Karan, you always had the ultimate ability to just take the headphones off. What I also don't know is after years of you playing in this band, was your hearing already damaged and you came into this job with sensitive ears so that using headphones on this job maybe contributed to an ailment you already had doing the job. Too many questions here, none of you have answered. So therefore, you're gonna share in the amount of money that it took for him to get his hearing back on track. For that reason, judgment for the plaintiff for half of the $2,500, $1,250 for the plaintiff. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $1,250. Never gonna work in this town again. I hope nobody ever works for you again. <laughs> You're never gonna hear again. Oh, yeah, that was a low blow. Real mature. <laughs> Follow me this way, gentlemen. Arrogant. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.